We're looking at the physical geography of Latin America. Now, within Latin America, you've got various elements uh, in, in regards to their physical geography, which makes it unique. Uh, you've got mountains. You've got plains for grasses and livestock. You've got rivers. You have islands in the Caribbean, and then we're also going to look at the resources that are available um, within Latin America that make up its physical geography. Now we've got two different sections in the physical geography that I'm talking about. First, we're going to look at the mountains, and then we're going to shift and look at the highland zone, uh, just in regards to all the other places. But elevation is your main physical feature here because it's on the Pacific coast, which is partly due to the Ring of Fire, which is located on the Pacific Continental uh, Plate, which is very highly active. Now, the first one we're going to look at is the Andes Mountains, within the mountains. Um, and what we're going to see is the Andes Mountains runs through the western portion of North, Central, and South America. It runs all the way along the coast, and it forms a western barrier to movement. Uh, you're not going to have people go from the west to the east because of this. Also, this is the area that's home to the Inca people, uh, but the Atacama Rain Desert, uh, or the Atacama, Atacama Desert is formed um, because of the Andes Mountains, and it's kind of on the flip side. You're thinking Atacama Desert is located next to the ocean, so it can't be the rain shadow, but your trade winds are coming from the east to the west, and so the windward winds, which are wet, are getting trapped on the eastern side of the Andes Mountains, and the moisture is not getting over to the west, so you have the rain shadow effect on the western side of the mountains, even though it's closest to the coast. Now, your next one, we're looking at the highlands zones. These are just the other elevation zones that we find throughout the region. Uh, the Guiana Highlands is in the northeastern section of South America. You've also got the, the Mexican Plateau, which is formed because of the Sierra Madre Oriental, the eastern mountains that run through Mexico, and the Sierra Madre Occidental, which is the western mountain range that runs through Mexico. Uh, and these mountain ranges come together and form the Cordilleras. Plains for grains. You've got the Llanos in Colombia and Venezuela. This is a very grassy, treeless area, which is great for farming and grazing. You've also got the plains of the Amazon River Basin. These are known as the Cerrado. Uh, this is your savanna area. It's got flat terrain with moderate rainfall. And you've got the pampas of Argentina and Uruguay. Uh, this is a, gr these grasslands have very rich soil uh, and people can uh, raise cattle and grow wheat here. Now your rivers. Number one, you have the Amazon River. This is, river runs 4,000 miles and it runs from the west to the east. It's fed by a thousand different tributaries, and it carries more water to the ocean than the next seven largest rivers in the world combined. There's a lot of water flowing through the Amazon River. The next river is the Orinoco. The Orinoco is founded in the northern part of Venezuela, and it runs 1,500 miles. Then the Parana, this one runs 3,000 miles from south to west in the highlands of southern Brazil. Your islands of the Caribbean. You've got two of these. Number one, you have the Greater Antilles. These form Cuba, Jamaica, Hispaniola, Hispaniola, and Puerto Rico. Hispaniola is actually where Columbus settled, not in America. Uh, number two, the Lesser Antilles. These are the smaller islands southeast of Puerto Rico. And last but not least, in the physical geography, we're going to be looking at resources. You've got mineral resources and energy resources in Latin America. Your mineral resources, we're looking at gold, silver, copper, bauxite, tin, lead, and nickel. Some of your energy resources that we can find in Latin America are oil, coal, natural gas, uranium, and hydroelectric power. Now, we're looking at the climate and vegetation of Latin America. Your climate and vegetation in Latin America is very varied, if that makes sense. It's a varied climate and vegetation zone. You go all the way from hot and humid in the Amazon uh, basin to a dry desert of Mexico and Chile. You've got some wide ranges, some wide variances of uh, some climates. Um, it's divided up into different, different zones. You've got the tropical zones. You have the dry climate zones. You have the mid-latitude climate zones. 
and, and those are your three major zones that we're going to find throughout Latin America. Mainly, we're going to have highland zones. And the highland zones, depending on how high you are in elevation, is what's going to determine what grows there. Uh, so because of elevation, again, because of the Pacific, uh, the, the nearness to the Ring of Fire and it being on the Pacific coast, uh, which is very, very active, your highland zones, this elevation is formed, the higher up you go, the different uh, vegetation you're going to find in the colder that it's going to get. Uh, now we do want to point out one thing for you uh, and that is El Nino. Um, because of El Nino the Pacific Ocean gets warmer and more flooding occurs in Latin America um, as well as in North America. And we've talked about that before so Latin America gets more rain and it actually floods because of El Nino. On the reverse of that it's dry in these other areas. The first climate zone that we're looking at is the tropical zones. These are located on the equator. And what we know about the equator is it receives mo most of the sun's direct rays. And so it's very warm and it's humid. A lot of moisture in this area. You've got tropical wet and tropical wet and dry. Tropical wet is where your rainforests are going to be, which are dense forests that's made up of the most diverse wildlife you'll ever find anywhere else on the earth. And the Amazon rainforest, which is the world's largest rainforest, has more plants and animals than anywhere else on Earth. Then you've got tropical wet and dry. This is found in South America. Uh, in, in South America, you have a lot of savannas, which are part of the wet and dry, also known as tropical grasslands. Then you have dry climates. There's two different types, semi-arid and desert. In your semi-arid dry climate, uh, you've got dry areas, imagine that, with a little bit of rain. This is in parts of Mexico, Brazil, Uruguay, and Argentina. And this is mainly made up of your desert scrubs, uh, some desert grasses, that sort of thing. Um, then number two, deserts. This is mainly found in northern Mexico and then parts of Peru. Uh, you've got the Atacama Desert, which is again formed from the rain shadow effect from the Andes Mountains. And you're going to have desert waste here and a little bit of cactus. That's about it. Now your mid-latitude climate zones. This is where you're going to have a lot more in. You've got humid subtropical, Mediterranean, marine west coast, and the highlands. In the humid subtropical, this area has rainy winters and hot, humid summers. This is going to be found in Paraguay, Uruguay, southern Brazil, and Bolivia, as well as northern Argentina. Again, this has varied vegetation. A bunch of different ones. Then you have Mediterranean. This is the hot, dry summers and cool, moist winters. You're going to find this in parts of Chile along the western coast. What you're going to have here is a lot of chaparral, which is really grassy lands, um, savanna type grasslands. And then you're going to have the marine west coast. This is not Chanel west coast, the actress. This is marine west coast. This is cool. This is rainy winters, has mild summers. You're going to find this in the southwestern portions of South America, especially in Chile and Argentina. And you're going to have different types of deciduous uh, forests here. And then you've got the highland zones. Again, this is the one that you're going to have the most uh, area in because of elevation. And it all depends on how high you are. It's moderate to cold depending on your elevation. The higher up you go, the colder it's going to get. The lower you go, the warmer it's going to get. Uh, and you're going to see this in the mountains of Mexico and South America.